Doki. Facebook Live, <clears throat> we're on, we're cranking. Zoom Room. Good morning, everyone. Allstate Cleveland, Christopher's in the house. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Winsboro, Texas, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. The room is filling up. Good to see you guys in here this morning. Welcome in. I'm Ivan. Hello, Facebook. Good morning, everybody in Facebook land. Lots going on today. Very excited to get the day started. Nice and early. On the click. Nine o'clock. And here we go. All right. Um, what do we got? We got news. Uh, we got a crisp white t-shirt. Haven't worn white in a while uh, for a program like this. Since we switched backdrops, I did get a little bit of chatter yesterday from some folks regarding the fact that with the haircuts on the dark letters, we had some visibility challenges. So I went with the classic barber wearing white kind of look for this morning's class that when and where we need it, we'll get a little backdrop ability, if you will, which I think will be helpful for everybody. Uh, so that's uh, good and new. Now, in the beverage category, check it out. Look at this beauty. Now, many of you know, I am very frequently seen wearing a Carl's Barbershop t-shirt. My friend Cisco owns Carl's Barbershop down in Davie, Florida. And you know, if I lived in Florida, I would work at Cisco's place. I would work at Carl's Barbershop because the place is just awesome. And he's a good buddy of mine. I've taught classes there. I've had my hair cut there. I've hung out there. I love the place. I, I could move in. I could live there. So he's a good friend of mine. He sent this in the mail the other day as a gift. Uh, it's got the Clipper Guy logo on there. It's got the Cubbies on there. And it's beautiful. It's enameled, finished. Um, it's filled with ice and water, and it's icy cold. Thank you, Miguel. So that's new. That's an addition to the program. Thank you very much, Cisco. Carl's Barbershop, Davie, Florida. When Florida opens back up, get down there. It's just outside of Fort Lauderdale, off of State Route 84. Get you a haircut. Um, that's a big new thing. Also, I've got a short-term special running on the web. And this is get it while it's hot because when it's gone, it's gone. This is two of my books. I want you guys to know about this deal because it's going to be over very quick. I only have a limited number of these. I think before we got on the air this morning, I saw I have a dozen left. But Big Busy Barbershop. Bigger Big Busy Barbershop. These are my barbershop and hair salon marketing books. These are one idea a day, a week, every week, 52 weeks, year one, year two. Marketing to build and grow your business. There's no haircutting in these books. There's nothing in here but one idea every week to grow your business. Normally these books are $15 each. The two pack is 30 bucks, but I've ordered new covers. I'm updating the books to look like they're part of the family. I've got new covers coming in on the way, and so I'm closing out and blowing out the last of the old covers. You can have them both, both books, for less than the cost of one. Normally, it's $15 each. The deal now, first come, first serve. When they're gone, they're gone. The inventory level is set on the website, so if you go to order it and it will let you order it, you're getting books. But as soon as they're gone, they're gone. 12 bucks, 12 bucks plus shipping for the pair. Both titles, it would cost you 15 for one. It's like buy one for less and get the other one free. Year one, year two, 104 weeks of solid marketing strategy to build and grow your haircut business. Go online, get the books before they're gone. They will be gone by the end of this class. Take a minute, click over, Ivanzoot.com, buy them now. Brian Roberts got your flat top charity head in the mail. Thank you for that purchase. All that money went to the PBA COVID relief fund for beauty industry professionals. Thank you for bidding on that. We're gonna cut another flat top next week and that flat top we're gonna also auction off for COVID relief charity. I have to figure out how to do it. What I think I'm gonna do, I may use my uh, website to do it but I want to do it as a raffle ticket. I want to sell, you know, $1 chances to buy the thing and um, we'll raffle it off to a single winner. But rather than have one person pay for and buy that mannequin, 
uh, what we would end up doing is selling raffle tickets. Because, you know, if we can sell a thousand raffle tickets, everybody gives a buck and we give away a lot more money. So um, that's something that we're looking at and working on and working towards. Uh, we'll do that flat top probably next week and we'll see what happens with that initiative. So everybody's checking in here. We got a good day rocking and rolling. This class is razor line and edge. I'm going to take you through the razor line and edge procedure and specifically today we're going to tweak it up. We've shared it in the past but today we're going to be bringing in a different product to use with it coming from our friends at Jatai International. Uh, from Jatai International, from uh, Feather Razor. Of course, we're going to be using Feather Razor tools because we have been. Uh, Jatai is now a sponsor of these classes and programming. We want to acknowledge them. We want to tell you that you can go to my uh, Instagram profile and you can sign up for a big, fat, juicy coupon code for a discount 25% off at Jatai.net. We also want to encourage you to go to Jatai International and sign up for Jatai Academy. Jatai Academy is an online <clears throat> educational academy, and um, I've contributed a lot of video content to Jatai Academy, and they've got lots and lots of other really great folks doing great things on there. So I want to encourage you to go there, sign up, and be a member of that community over at uh, Jatai Online. So we'll get into razor line and edge in a minute. We're going to be back at 11 for a $100,000 haircutter. I also want to make you guys aware tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Tomorrow, the 10 o'clock, uh, the 9 o'clock class is, uh, it's scheduled to be revolution cutting. We've covered that again recently. So we may do something a little different in the haircut category tomorrow morning. But tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. will definitely be a technical class. Um, but 10 a.m. as we are going back to work. Little by little, states are opening up. People are getting engaged and involved and getting busy. And um, we've got a five-point plan. We're going to be sharing a five-point strategy to get people back to work and busy and successful in the business. So that is an opportunity for people to uh, participate. It's not here on my page, but it's going to be on Ronit's page instead. Joni, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. $100,000 hair cutter. We start with the tip of the day, April 28. Anybody got a birthday today? Chime in today if it's your birthday. April 28, if that is your birthday. My nephew's birthday was two days ago on the 26th. Uh, my brother's birthday was earlier in the month. My father-in-law's birthday's coming up next month. But April 28, day 148, with 217 days remaining. Books bought. Mike Porter, you got two, buddy. You're in. Uh, May 28, day 148, 217 days remaining in the year. Block your blondes. All right, this is about nape lines on your men's haircuts. Block your blondes. Thin, fine hair should carry a blocked nape line. Some lighter colors and finer textures cannot support tapered edges. Thin, fine hair will not really taper properly. It is preferred to block these clients to put a nice finish on the back and bottom edge of their haircuts. This is the opposite of what men's haircutters typically try to do, but the texture demands to be treated differently. Very light colors disappear as they get shorter. Tapering very light hair colors can alter the look of the cut. You end up making them look too bald, too high if you try to taper some of your very fine textured blondes. This is not a blanket statement. This is a statement about some haircut textures in some situations. There's still hair present, but it becomes invisible. Is hair you cannot see really still there? Even if it's there but you can't see it, is it there, does it count? Try to taper very light colors. Trying to taper very light colors usually ends up with the barber taking the whole haircut up too high. This throws off the balance of the entire shape. Does anybody have any questions on that one? That's a little bit of a tricky tip there. But blocking blondes as opposed to tight tapering on fine blonde hair. Now, I do want to tell you a story related to this one that I think is pretty funny to me. I laugh every time I think about it. And the reason I laugh when I tell this story is because if I don't laugh, I'm going to cry. And the deal was I was covering the... Um, what does it say? Good morning, everyone. I can't wait to get back to my work with all my new zoot tools. Jennifer, can't wait for you to get back to work either. Um, 
I'm cutting hair in the shop. The boss is gone. He's on vacation. I'm covering the shop. And by the way, I want to tell you guys, just because Ivan's been cutting hair a lot of years, and just because Ivan's got a lot of hair cutting experience, this is a recent story. I'm not telling you a story from when I was a rookie, like 30 years ago. I'm telling you a story that happened within the last three years. All right? That gives you a little bit of perspective on this. The boss is on vacation. I'm covering the shop. Guy comes in to get a haircut. Drives up in a Jaguar. He's wearing a suit with a tie. Got a fancy Burberry's trench coat on. I know him. He's one of the boss's customers. I've seen him many times. He actually teaches at a local community college. Nice guy. Smart guy. Good client. Whatever. Comes in, sits down. How do you want your haircut? He says, I want it about a half inch shorter on top. Taper up the back and sides and taper the neckline. Now, you must know this guy is uh, fine textured, thinner hair, not real thick and heavy density, and like the, the last end of dirty blonde heading towards brown, but not quite. Not quite light fair blonde, but like a medium blonde. Shorten the top for me, taper up the sides, and taper the nape area. That's a classic haircut. I can do that standing on my head with my eyes closed. I don't even have to think to do that haircut. So what did I do? I started thinking. I started overthinking. I cut the top. I tapered the back and sides. I, I tapered up the back and sides, and I started working on tapering the neckline. Now, he's got very thin, fine hair in the nape. He's got very light-colored hair in the nape. And I'm tapering, and I'm tapering, and I just can't get a nice finish on it. And I'm tapering, and I'm tapering, and I'm tapering. Now, a haircut takes me six to seven minutes in the shop. That's just the reality of me and haircutting, okay? And I'm tapering and tapering. I'm into my like 12th minute on this haircut. I'm into the 15th minute on the haircut. I spent almost 20 minutes on this gentleman's haircut. For me, that is completely unheard of. That's like an amount of time Ivan doesn't do. So I get this guy's hair, haircut done. I show him the mirror. He thanks me. He pays me. He tips me. He leaves. He drives away. And I'm like, oh, my God, what a nightmare that piece of work was. He's gone. Three, four weeks later, he comes in for another haircut. Now, the boss is back. He's got sitting with the boss. I see him coming walking in, and I'm like, all right. And I just, I'm cutting at my chair, and I'm watching the boss cut this guy. And I'm watching the boss cut this guy. And I'm watching the boss cut this guy. And when he gets to the neckline, he, he, he takes, shortens the top down, he tapers up the sides just like I did. When he gets to the neckline, I'm not kidding you, my boss took his trimmer and he went to this guy's neckline and he went bang, 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 bang. And he blocked the line across the back of this guy's neck. And then he razored him up, dusted him off, took his money, shaked his hand. This was before coronavirus. We could shake hands. And he sent him out the door. And this guy got in his Jaguar and he drove away. And as soon as he was gone, I turned to the boss and I go, now just wait a minute. I cut him when you were on vacation. And my boss said, yeah, he said you cut him. He said you did a great job. He said you took a long time though, which is not like you. And I said, yeah, because when he sat down, he told me, take a little off the top, taper the sides and taper the neckline. And I tried to taper his neckline. And I was fighting with his neckline. And I was struggling with his neckline. And my boss looks at me and he shakes his head and he says, you can't taper that neckline. I wouldn't even try. End of conversation. And I'm shaking my head because you know what? I let this guy get in my head. He told me taper the neckline. I'm an experienced professional. I know you can't taper that neckline, but I saw a Jaguar and I saw a Burberry's trench coat and a suit and a tie, and I assume this guy knows what he wants and he tells me what he wants me to do. But because he said to do it, I boxed myself into doing it. And I should have just used my better judgment, boom, 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 and blocked his neckline. So that's the $100,000 hair cutter tip of the day. The $100,000 hair cutter tip of the day is neckline, when and where it is appropriate, and the thing to do, block your blondes. Trying to taper in that situation, because quite frankly, it may not work. Big learning experience for me. Now, let's get into our razor line and edge. Quick reminder, of course, everybody knows, Barbicide, the back to work plan and the reopening recommendations, free downloads off of 
mylinkorbarbicide.com. Go there and get your free information to be armed and dangerous and ready to get back to work. Oh, we got to do one more 100K haircutter. Who's got a date for me? Somebody throw out a date. What do you got? Anybody? We got one more and then we go. Stacy, September 4. September 4. My wife is September 12. It's her birthday. September 4, day 247. 118 days remaining in the year. Post your prices. The price of a haircut should not be a secret. A listing of all services offered and their prices should be displayed prominently at the front of the shop. This can be a menu board or a service flyer. A client should be able to see it, read it, and understand it without having to ask. If you offer tiered pricing for different haircutters based on experience and traffic, you can list haircuts as starting at and then a price. Be proud of the price you have selected. Treat it as good news. Don't be embarrassed about it. Don't try to hide it. If you think you got to hide it, you got a problem. If you're fearful to share the price, perhaps you have issues with the value you are delivering. It's about transparency. It's about awareness. Darren, welcome in. I see you're checking in on Facebook there. Tell your grand, Lizzie, tell your grandfather happy birthday when September 11 rolls around. Uh, I got a good friend who's September 11. My wife is September 12. All right, guys, razor line and edge. That's where we're going today. And we're going to feature a couple of things. Number one... We're going to feature products from Jatai. This is the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Set. Facial cleanser, shaving cream, and moisturizer. It's a three-piece system. These are all specifically, and I want to take them out without trash in the box. These are TSA-approved travel sizes. These are very retailable sizes. This three-pack, I think, retails in your shop for 20 bucks. Guys, if you use this product in service delivery, it is a... It is a slam dunk sale. It is so easy to make this work. Got to mute everybody. We're getting people chiming in kind of loud. Now, have this available for purchase up front. Use the products in service delivery. The rule is, if you don't have it to buy at the front of the shop, you do not use it for service delivery. That's a standard rule. That was a rule in my shop. I'll say it again. If you don't have the product available for purchase at the front of the store, you do not use the product for service delivery. There's only one exception there, and that exception is hot lather. I love hot lather, but I hate hot lather. Some of you have heard me talk about this. I love hot lather, but I hate hot lather. I love the smell of hot lather. I love the feel of hot lather. I love the classic traditionalness of hot lather. I love the idea of the straight razor shave at the sideburn, the neckline, and the ear area. It just puts that professional finish on a haircut. Barber or Kaz. Kaz, folks, you're going to have to use... The protected blade. That is a Pro Edge guarded blade. We also have the blade that is in our nape and body razor that is also a wire wrapped and protected blade. Pro guards look like this. They come in the boxes from Jatai. I'm going to open this one up and they come in your touchless dispenser. These are pretty cool. The boxes look like this. There's 15 blades in a cartridge. That's your ProGuard blade. They slide out, and by attaching the pin on the front of the razor head like that, you put it in like that, and you lay it up, and you can slide the blades directly into the cartridge into the handle. You have to slide this back, catch the blade, and slide it in. That lets you work with what we call that no-touch feature. The blades also contain, in the bottom of the cartridge, the blade disposal slot, so you slide them back in. It's like its own little sharp spin. I still like the full-size sharp spin on the counter because it communicates the sanitation and infection control uh, issue. Scott's question, so what do you what do you do with multiple product lines? I'm not sure what you mean by that question, Scott. Tell me a little more and I'll try to give you an answer. Um, but we're gonna use the Jatai product today in our razor shave, in our service delivery, so I can tell you a little bit about it. We're gonna use our feather nape and body razor. And remember, big fat coupon code in the links list on my Insta uh, for discounts if you buy these from the feather folks directly. I'm trying to pick up this blade and put this back into 
my uh, Artist Club handle. This is the Artist Club wood handle razor. Really, really nice tool. Really, really nice feel. Uh, size, weight, balance, and all that good stuff. Uh, I prefer the ProGuard blades. Um, Feather makes a bunch of different blades. They make their standard Pro blade. They make their Super, which is a thicker, heavier blade with a greater degree of blade exposure out of the handle. The blades are a little bit deeper. That's standard. That's Super. They make the light blades. Light blades are thinner and finer. And they're designed for thinner, finer textures of hair. They're a little more gentle, uh, depending on your client's hair texture. And there's also Soft Guard. Soft Guard is also a guarded blade. It's like a blend between a Pro Guard and a light formula blade together. Really nice, really soft, really gentle feel uh, for service and work. Uh, stick to one or do you carry retail just one? Okay, Scott, um, the answer is not everybody's going to find everything within every product line. You guys know I have my Clipper Guy products. It's a four item line. I've got a shave cream, I've got my After Buzz, a paste and a wax. I also use a gel that comes from outside my line within the John Amico line. So most of us will tend to pick and choose what we prefer uh, of products. I do like the idea of being a single line brand within a shop or salon, but that all isn't always totally a reality for some haircut professionals. So there may be an opportunity to introduce items that are a little bit different or specialty purposes and things like that. Um, I hope that answers that question. We can talk more if you wish. All right. So I love hot lather, but I hate hot lather. I hate hot lather because it's drying and alkaline. I hate hot lather because the machines all leak and they suck. But the most important thing I hate about hot lather is I can't make money with hot lather. Clients love the hot lather experience, but I can't sell hot lather. So I'm not going to tell you not to use hot lather. I believe you should. I believe you should use hot lather in the shop as part of a neckline sideburn ear area shave service. But I also believe you should be using retailable, retail available products during that service as well. So let's bring our client in here and let's take you through the procedure. We're gonna do our haircut. We're gonna get our haircut in place, locked and loaded. And let me adjust my camera here so I can get more of that head. I'm not so concerned with my head, I'm concerned with his head. And I wanna adjust my Facebook angle a little bit there too so we get a little more of our customer in there let's see if we can adjust the pitch on this just a little bit let me get my Facebook camera up a little uh, up a little will be this adjustment and when we're up a little how'd that do and let's get it down a little up a little and down a little how'd that do and it looks like it did pretty good and it looks like we're good here. All right, so we've got our client. We're gonna do our lining, edging, and finishing. We've got our zoot comb, we've got our small end, we've got our trimmer. This is gonna be sideburns, ear areas, details, quarter panels, neckline, tapering. I'm just fudging my way through this right now. You get the idea. I've got my haircut finished. Now it's time to razor line and edge. So what's the first thing we want to do? We want to go hot lather. Now, I don't have a hot lather machine here, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use Barbasol. I got a cheapy can here, 99 cents. Well, I would never use this in the shop. I would never have this in the shop. But for our purposes, it lets me mock my way through what we're doing. And it's just as bad as hot lather. It's highly alkaline. It's drying. If you put this on your face and you smile, your face will crack. You really don't want to use this on yourself or a client. But for demo purposes, demo, hear me now, for demo purposes, this will work just fine. So I'm going to apply my lather and ooh and ah, the client is ooing, the client is eyeing, the client's very excited, the client's very happy. Oh, this is why I come to you. You can't get this at those other places. Oh my God, this is my favorite part of the haircut experience. Oh, that smells great. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, I love you and what you do for me. You're the best, Ivan. Oh my goodness, you're just terrific. Blah, blah, you know how that goes. You've heard that story. That's exactly how clients behave when you use hot lather. Let them ooh and ah, let them enjoy the hot lather experience. 
That's what it's all about. Wipe off the extra off of my hands. Now, steam towel time. Whether you are using a cabinet for steam towels or whether you are making steam towels at the sink, doesn't matter what you choose to do. Um, a steam towel cabinet is an inexpensive purchase and one that I suggest that professionals that are serious about delivering services in this way definitely spend a couple of bucks to, to use steam towels in this way. Uh, but if not, hot running water at the sink will allow you to... Lynn Yafchak checking in from Las Vegas and Jason Pachin, Northwest Indiana, in the house. Good to have Donnell's here this morning as well. Welcome in Diversified Cuts. We're seeing sort of some of the usual suspects along with some other friends and guests checking in. Good to see. So, steam towel. If you got hot running water, you can do a classic barbershop steam towel. Fold your towel in a third like that. Fold your towel in a third again. You folded it twice thirds the long skinny way. Now, fold your towel in half. You have what is now a sixth of a towel folded this way. Roll your towel. Roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Now, you're gonna make a steam towel out of this. If you're putting them in a cabinet, that goes right in the cabinet just like that, no problem. But if you're gonna do them with the sink, turn on the hot water. Hot, hot. Mike from Daytona State. Good to have you here. Hot water. Run the hot water straight down the top of the steam towel. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. Hot water running through it. Hot water running through it. It's getting so hot that you almost can't hold it. Hot, 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 hot. And when it's so hot that you can't hold it anymore, pull the towel out of the water, switch the water to cold, and put your other hand in the cold water. You're chilling your hand. Then switch the towel and switch hands. Cool it. This hand will be super hot. You'll cool it off with cold water. This hand is holding it with the chilled hand. Chill, 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 cold water. Wring out the towel. Squeeze out any remaining water. It's still a plenty hot towel inside there. It's steaming hot, but you've cooled your hands. If you don't pre-chill your hands like this, you can't grab that towel. Now, open up the towel. It'll start steaming. Wiggle it a little bit if you need to to regulate the temperature and then put that towel in place on the client. If you thought that client was ooing and eyeing when you put the warm lather on him, now you're really, he's oh, he's really, oh, he's really gonna be loving it. This is what really gets him excited. He's got that warm towel on there with the hot lather. His eyes are closed. He's a happy guy. By the way, this is when you tell him Hey, when we're done, I want you to buy that shave cream product up front, the Healthy Luxury Shave Set from Jatai. This is when you tell them, and by the way, dude, I need you to send me two friends. And this is when you tell them, and hey, you're a four-week haircut, so you're making your appointment today before you leave. When you got them, you got to get them. This is when you've got a thousand percent of their attention. Leverage that attention to tell them and ask them the things you need them to do and the things you want them to do. Okay, warm leather, hot towel, hot, 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 feeling really good. Now, while that's going on, you're changing your blade. You're removing the old blade from your razor. You're putting the new blade in your razor. Whether it's the Nape razor from Jatai with the wire-wrapped blade, you can get those on my website and you can use your coupon code, stayhome20, or you can get these from Jatai by going to my Instagram and signing up for the coupon code from Jatai for 25% off at Jatai.net. Either way, big savings. Either way, the right tools. And the right tools are what you need. Now, I got my fresh blade in there because every client gets a brand new blade. I'm going to use my hot towel now to remove any traces of the hot lather. I think this is very important for you to understand. The hot lather it softens the hair, it lubricates the skin, it smells good, it feels nice. Make no mistake, and please understand, hot lather is a dog and pony show. You know what that expression means? That means it's about engagement, it's about entertainment, it's about magic, it's about experience. Hot lather is about experience, but hot lather doesn't put Ivan's kids in college. Hot lather doesn't buy me a truck. Hot lather doesn't put food on my table. Hot lather enhances the experience 
all of which contributes to my success, but hot lather isn't the key to this experience. Here we go. What you're gonna do next is you're gonna apply your shaving product. Now, in this case, it's the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Cream. I've taken this one out, and I think it's real important that you use for service, it's got a safety seal on there, Take that safety seal off, throw it away. I think it's very important that you use the packaging and the sizing that the customers buy. I don't want to use a big, huge bucket that I'm dipping into for this because I want to show it to him. I want him to hold it. I want him to see it as he experiences it. So I prep the skin and the surface. I've got my blade and my handle. I'm getting ready to shave. Here's what I do. I apply a small amount of shave cream in my hand and I show him. I'm using Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Cream. Clog-free, refreshing, non-foaming formula. This is really cool stuff. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna apply the shave cream to the areas that I'm going to shave. And you'll notice this is a smooth, slick, slippery, moisturizing, really nice shaving agent. And you'll also notice it does not lather or foam. And that's extremely important. I'm applying it on the side you can't see. Just play along with me here. It doesn't lather or foam. It lets you see through it, which is an extremely important issue for effective shaving. You know, the Gillette guys and the Schick commercials have been lying to you for years. When they show you on TV, in a commercial, a guy that looks like Santa Claus with a big face of foam and they show you a guy with that razor plowing through all that foam. Looks like a snow plow in Chicago in February. That's not how you shave. That's not how a barber shaves. That's not how you're ever supposed to shave. The big rule is you never shave a surface you can't see. I'm going to say it again. You never shave a surface that you cannot see. That's dangerous. Moles, bumps in the bone structure, inconsistencies in the skin surface. Where's the sideburn line and edge? Who knows? You're hacking through foam. Barbers don't hack through foam. Good shaving technique, and I don't even like to call it shaving. I like to call it wiping. Good shaving technique is really good wiping technique because good shaving is a four wipe process. I'm going to take you through this process so you see what it looks like. Now, the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Cream stays clear. You can see right through it. It's very easy to shave through it. But with any other shave cream that lathers or foams, you need to remove it. You need to wipe it away, and it looks like this. I'm going to shave that sideburn. The first thing I do is I use my thumb to wipe away the shave cream. That's wipe number one. Wipe away the shave cream. Wipe number two, I wipe the shave cream on the towel. That's two wipes. We're halfway there. The reason for this is I want to get rid of the shave cream so I can see my surface. I want to wipe off that shave cream, and I want to get it off my thumb so my thumb is clean and dry. Wipe and wipe. Now, I've seen some people wipe with the back edge of the razor where they wipe with the back edge of the razor and then they wipe the razor on the towel. Okay, that works, but if you do that, you lose the ability to read the skin with your thumb. You're much better off wiping with your thumb so you can read and feel that surface than using the back edge of your razor. So wipe number one, wipe number two. Are you ready? Let's go to wipe number three we got a question here on Facebook. Uh, haircut price question. If you were to add hot towel and lather service, do you add this to every client service or suggest an additional? No, no. Tyler, thank you so much, Tyler, for being here. Thank you so much, Tyler, for asking this question. Fundamentally important. The beauty of this is this is an opportunity for any hair cutter who's not doing this to charge $5 more for every single haircut tomorrow. You add this to every haircut, it's not an option, it's not a choice. They can decline it. No, 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 no razor for me. They can decline it, 
but build it into the price and raise your price. It's about adding value. You're adding experience. You're adding cost. You need to recover the cost for sure, but you absolutely add this to every haircut. You absolutely charge this on every haircut. You absolutely take this money. Shouldn't you have done a check of the face before you start so you should be mindful of any moles? Of course, David. Yes, you should be doing this, but mindful. How mindful am I? I forget which shoe goes on which foot sometimes, okay? I'm just not able to remember everything I'm supposed to be mindful of. So yes, you're supposed to check their scalp for moles and bumps and things before you cut. Hey, when I was in beauty school, how has been in beauty school this long ago? How many people here, throw me your thumb or show me your thumb, how many people here ever worked in a student clinic where when they gave you your customer ticket for your customer, they also gave you a pair of wooden popsicle sticks? with every customer. Has anybody here been in the business long enough to remember when a student clinic, when they gave you a ticket, they also gave you two wooden popsicle sticks, all right? Anybody? Number one, remember that. And number two, is there anybody here that can tell me why they gave you the wooden popsicle sticks? I want to see if anybody's got the answer to this one. Anybody know? Nobody's been in school that long ago. Some of our teachers out there have had to have this experience. Somebody's got to know what's up with the popsicle sticks. That's right, Crystal. Checking for lice. When I was in beauty school, they would give you a client service ticket and two wooden popsicle sticks so you could look through their hair to see if they had creepy crawlies before you cut their hair. We're supposed to be doing that too. David, have you ever seen that happen? You should be mindful of that, right? But we don't do that anymore. We should, but we don't. Wiping. Wipe number one, wipe away the shave cream. Use your thumb for tactile ability. I went to beauty school in 1975. Sharon, you got me beat, all right? Wipe number one, wipe number two, wipe number three is with your razor. Apply tension on the skin, pull up on the skin, hold the razor at a low, slow angle and gently wipe away the hair. Don't think of it as shaving. Think of it as wiping. You're wiping away the hair. Wipe number four is you wipe the razor on the towel. That's four wipes. Let's look at them again. Wipe number one, wipe number two, wipe number three, wipe number four. That's shaving, guys. That's cleaning up a neckline with a wire-wrapped blade, 50 state legal, cause or barber license. Everyone can do it. Everyone should do it to put that perfect finish on your men's haircuts. Wipe number one around the ear. Wipe number two. Wipe, 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 wipe number three. Wipe it off on the towel. That's wipe number four. Rear quarter panel behind the ear. Wipe number one. Wipe number two. Tension on the skin. Wipe number three. Wiping. A gentle, smooth wiping motion. Wipe number four. I wipe the towel off on, or wipe the razor off on the towel, and I'm ready to go again. Wipe, 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 wipe. Wipe off the excess shave cream. Tension on the skin. Wiping away the excess hair and wiping the razor on the back of the towel. That's your four wipes that makes up your shaving procedure. Every one of those steps is equally and critically important. You've got to clear the skin to see where you're shaving. With a clear product, it's even easier and better. Concentrated, use very little. All of these things are things the client needs to hear. All of these things are things you should be explaining throughout the process and throughout the procedure. When that's all finished, one more steam towel. Now, you can use the same towel if you're making steam towels at the sink. If you're taking them out of a cabinet, you take a brand new, um, Michael asks, 30 degree angle of the blade to the skin. My answer to that question is 30, sure. The lower the angle, the better, depending on the density and texture of the hair. 
thinner and finer hair. You can lay very, very flat. I would say it's below 30 in a lot of instances. I might be very low to the skin like that. I might be 15 degrees if I've got enough room to lay the blade and I'm going to be very gentle. The answer is the better you've prepped the skin, the better you've prepped the hair, and it's always going to be a brand new, fresh, clean blade, it's going to gently, you don't want to dig, you don't want to catch the skin, and you don't want to push or press that it's such a, such a, such a light touch. One of the ways we train people to do this is we have people shave without blades. We have people take the handle with no blade in it, and I will come in and I will demo on a client, and I will show what it should feel like, and then I will have the student do the exact same thing, and I will have the client answer the question, is the student pressing harder or lighter than Ivan is? Because this is how it should feel. That's your baseline. And then I'll have the student go in and do it, and I'll have the client say, whoa, you're pressing way harder than Ivan did. Or you'll have the student, or you'll have the model say, oh, I can't even feel you at all. Ivan was pressing harder than that. That's unusual because almost never am I pressing harder than the student because you don't have that feel for it just yet. But the angle, 30 degrees is right about there. 30 degrees right there to me feels a little bit steep. I think depending on face shaving, and we've got a face shaving class later in the week, I think you're even laying flatter than that. The lower you get that angle in, the smoother it's going to clear away that hair and the easier it's going to be. The higher that angle is, the more it's going to be a scrape. You get up to 45, you're scraping off this guy. That's going to pull. That's going to hurt. That's going to irritate the skin. That's not going to be nearly as comfortable. So that low angle is ideal. Anywhere 30 and south, I think you're going to be fine. Hope that helps. Now, second steam towel. I go to my steam towel again. Again, fresh towel out of the cabinet. If you're using cabinet towels... A, thank you, Michael. Uh, you can reuse the same towel if you're using steam towel at the sink. It's his towel. He's the client. There's no issue of contamination or anything like that. Hot, 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 hot. Switch it. Cold hand, cold hand. Ring it out. Second steam towel. Open it up. Regulate the temp. Get it back on there. Ooh and ah. Ooh and ah. This feels great. Leave it there for a couple of seconds. Finishing up your conversation. Make sure you go up front. You get that healthy luxury shave set blah, 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 you finish what you're talking about, you wipe away any last traces of the shave cream from the client, all nice and good, and you finish with daily facial moisturizer. Now, I don't use the facial cleanser in the shop as part of my neckline shave. I do use the facial cleanser. I can use the facial cleanser in the shop and I do use it as part of my face shave experience. That's a additional element in the three piece set, but it's perfect for home and travel use. These go right in a travel kit. They come in a boxed set. It's so easy to use, but we're gonna follow up with daily moisturizer. Once again, as a brand new one, I've gotta pull the seal on here. Or, 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 that's the seal of approval. All right. That was a joke. People should have laughed right there. Okay. I'm going to take a small amount of that. I'm going to put it on there. I'm going to show them what it is. That's the daily moisturizer. That's a non-greasy nourishing formula. And we're going to come in and we're going to apply that where we've been not nice to skin, scraping with a razor and a trimmer and all that good stuff right up into a bit of the fade. Don't worry about getting it on the hair. And that'll finish with that nice moisturizer finish. Now, when we take him up front, he's experienced the product, we've talked about the product, we've used the product, and he is enthusiastic about the take home on the product. And guys, these cost you about 10, they sell for 20. It's a really great retailable item. Don't ever use anything on a client in the shop ever that is not available for purchase at the front of the store. I think that's probably the single most important element of this program after the four steps associated with shaving, the four wipes. Step number one, wipe off that shave cream. Step number two, wipe your thumb on the towel. Step number three, wipe away the hair 
from the area. And step number four, wipe that razor on the towel. Tension here is extremely important when you're pulling up on the skin like that, getting that little bit of what we call scalp scooting. You know, I've got that divot in the side of my head. You've got a high point, a low point, and a high point. You've got to get that hair out of the valley and get it up onto the neighboring hill to actually get that tension. Wipe, tension, wipe, 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 tension, wipe, wipe. That's your four wipes and your four step process. The steam towel is such an important part of the experience as is that hot lather that we used experientially so important, but not the product that we're featuring as part of what we do. Can you quickly show how to do a razor line on the left side? Absolutely. You do the same thing. You're gonna come in on the left hand side. You're gonna wipe, you're gonna wipe, you're going to come in with the razor. Depending on the ear area and the haircut, you can come in with a standard swipe here, or you can come in like this, straight down. Again, keeping the angle low and wiping. What would look like a reverse backhand stroke. Coming in backwards, backhand, and then wipe the razor. Because remember, the accumulation is going to be on the other side of the blade. Wipe it. Come in. Wipe it. Wipe it. Here. Wipe it, wipe, 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 turn it over, wipe, 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 wipe. That helps you with opposite side of the head. Other questions or comments? Anybody, anything as it relates to our razor line and edge? I love sharing this program because this is so valuable for beauty and barber professionals that are not delivering this aspect of the service to be able to upgrade the experience and thereby upgrade the price of the experience that they are delivering. We use the proper tools and we add value with the products that we use and then we make sure that we put the little bow on that, that we tie it up for ourselves. Because think about it, the haircut was 20. With the razor line and edge, it's 25. Now they're buying product with it, that's another 20 that's a $45 ticket out the door for the client. On a $45 ticket, you're not going to complain to me about the expense of throwing away razor blades. You're not going to complain to me about the need to cut fewer customers because of the need to maintain social distance. Think about it, guys. In the new world, it's starting to look like we're going to have to have time between appointments. We're going to have to have Nobody in the waiting room. We're going to have to have sanitation time built in that we haven't done in exactly that way in the past. We've done the sanitation, but we've got to do it a little bit differently. We've got to do it in a very visible way. When they reduce our productive capacity, that's the answer to the questions. How many haircuts can you do in a day? We're going to have to take a little bit of a different perspective on what does our service look like and correspondingly, what does our price look like? What other questions do you guys have today? Anybody, anything? Ah, uh, then ask the client before checkout, is one enough? Acacia Ann, you're my favorite attendee. You're my favorite student. You're my favorite participant today. Is one enough? What she's referring to there is the idea that anytime anybody ever buys anything, I'll say that again. Anytime anybody ever buys anything, you always ask the question, hey, is one enough? Because more often than not, whatever their answer is, sales go up. Hey, you know what? One's good, but give me an extra one for my gym bag. Hey, one's good, but I need one for my travel kit. Double your sales. Nobody wants to take this out of the bathroom, into the gym bag, out of the gym bag, into the suitcase. You got, I mean, come on. You got to have more than one of those. I always use an AfterBuzz. This is my product that is an after clipper, after shaving product. After Buzz is a great product. I'm currently, I got four of these. I got one in my bathroom. I got one in my travel kit. I got one in my gym bag. I got one in my tool bag. I got one here on the counter. It's better to have more than not enough. I think that applies to everything. That applies to chocolate. That applies to peanut butter. That applies to pizza. That applies to hair care product. It's better to have more than not enough. Absolutely. Totally agree. Other questions? Anybody? Anything?
All right, guys, we're going to knock off if we don't have any questions here. We're going to call this one finished. We're going to be back for our next class, which is going to be, what are we doing next? Let's look at the schedule. We got a busy week. $100,000 haircutter system at 11 o'clock. Um, tomorrow, haircutting at 9 a.m. Initial haircut pricing is tomorrow at 11. Face shave on Thursday. Savings systems. This is your finance and investment program. Hey, thumbs up if you want to retire with four and a half million dollars after being a haircutter, a career in haircutting, and a retirement with at least four and a half million dollars. That is not impossible. It's actually doable for any of us. David, four and a half million is the launching point. I got two thumbs up from a few. Guys, that's the program at 11 o'clock on Thursday, turning small money into big money. Like it or not, the haircut business is a small money business, but we're going to be building it into big money. How important is to get extra time in your appointments for good sanitizing and disinfecting? Donnell, right now, there are states in which you are not going to be able to open unless you have the ability to build in that time to do the effective sanitizing. Um, Ath Athulia, nice to have you here this morning as well. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Um, Friday, Clipper over comb at 9 o'clock. Compensation systems. Friday at 11, we're talking about money. How do you get paid in this business? How does the money flow? Where does it come from? Where does it go? Where does it come from, Cotton Eye Joe? No. How does the money flow in our business? We're going to talk about that at 11 o'clock on Friday. I want to remind you guys. I know I saw a couple of sales ping in while we were talking. The Big Busy Combo, normally $30 while they last, till they're gone, first come, first serve, $12 gets you both books. Ivanzoot.com. I've got new covers coming. It's the same information. I've updated the covers. I got to sell down the last of the old inventory. So go online and buy those before they are gone. And we're gone. Thank you guys. Come back again at 11 o'clock and we'll have another class. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye all.